All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Lockheed Kerbin Crew Exploration Vehicle Mod, which is being made by forum user Well. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is the Crew Exploration Vehicle, which was a concept design made by Lockheed Martin back in the early 2000s as a replacement for the Space Shuttle. Problem was, though, NASA didn't like some of its conceptual limitations and decided against it in favor of the Orion program. And that's why I always love mods like this that add in these conceptual designs of basically what could have been had NASA decided against Orion and for the CEV, we could have had a little space shuttle going up, and that's just fun. So let's jump right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what all this does add into the game and at its current state it only has two parts now I don't know if anything more will be added in the future there was some potential things that might be but for now we have two things and I'm actually pretty impressed by one of them of course being the actual ship itself and that is the LK CEV command pod and the reason I'm impressed with this is we actually have looked at a multitude of of other shuttle designs in the past and it never failed they would always be broken up into different parts typically a main body and at the very least a left and right wing this one on the other hand it's just all one piece and I appreciate that. I very, very much appreciate that. Now, it is kind of a bulky design, but I mean, uh, from the look of it, it does look like the concept images I have seen of the uh, Lockheed Martin design in the past, which makes it very nice. And it is very well modeled, very well textured, and most impressively of all, for me at least, it is very much stock alike. You guys know me, I like my mods to look like they fit with everything else in this game. And this definitely does look like a Kerbal built part, and that just makes me even happier. Now, as for the stats on this thing, it is a pretty impressive little uh, command pod, weighing in at 10.2 tons, it is pretty massive, but holds a maximum of five crew members on board, minimum, of course, of one to operate. Operate, but it does also come with a data transmitter. It is compatible with the Kerbal inventory system if uh, you do have that installed, and we'll actually talk a little bit more about this in a second. It is also, of course, being a shuttle, it does have a lifting surface with a rating of 4.5, which we'll also talk about that here in a little bit too, because that can actually cause some problems during launch. But we'll 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 talk about that. We'll we'll cover that. We then of course have RCS reaction wheel, the typical crew report, electric charge at 1500 and 1800 mono propellant. All in all, a very beautifully designed little ship, and uh, yeah, quite quite nice. I do enjoy it. Now, the second part that we do have for this is a Mark 12K radial mount chute specifically for the LKCEV. Now, this mod does come with a uh, craft file for the space plane hangar with one of these fully built, and basically how the mod maker had it was these uh, parachutes placed on the body and then using the offset tool placed just below the surface using holding down the shift key so you should still be able to click on the parachute if you get in the right spot but yes it does uh, make it a little bit weird that it's intended to hide the parachutes under the surface but you know what it looks just fine in my opinion popping the parachutes just directly on there and uh, that seems perfectly okay to me now other than that we do do have if we just grab a random piece we have a couple of attachment points one on the nose which I'm I'm wondering why that one's there I don't I don't know why it just doesn't seem like a, a, a node that you need but that's there if you want you have that attachment node up front and then we also have three on the back end so you can attach engines other fuel tanks whatever your heart desires now on the uh, included ship file with this the mod maker put a docking port here dead center and a puff engine on either side since this thing does have a mono propellant and a lot of it inside it and use the puff engine to take advantage of that 
and then threw on a couple of, um, oh my god, why do I always forget the name? Elevons, there we go, a couple of those down here for extra aerodynamics and more control. And yeah, that's basically the ship. You have the two parts for the mod of the actual shuttle itself, and then a fun new radial parachute for you, which is basically identical to the others, but again, oddly meant to be sort of hidden below the surface. Uh, let's actually, ooh, actually I did make that into, let's actually create a new ship here. Don't save, I did save that as a sub-assembly, so let's load on. This is basically the ship design that the mod maker gives you with it. So there we go, you got the two puff engines down there, the four additional elevons, which is why I think there is only two parts because there's already plenty of in-game pieces to finish making this a fully working shuttle. And as I did mention, there's the one parachute and the other parachute he installed up front, just below the surface, but shallow enough so that you can still click on it if you so desire. And there you go, that is the Lockheed Kerbin CEV, and I love this thing. Now some of you may be asking though, well since it is a shuttle, why don't we have a cargo bay that opens up for you to release things? And the purpose for that, or the reason rather for it not having it, is because of what this ship's concept was. Uh, the Lockheed Martin design was meant to be a cruise ship. You'd send this up and then whatever other things you'd have to probably send up in a second mission, and that was actually one of the big sticking points for NASA. It wanted to send everything up in one launch rather than two. And so the shuttle itself was designed purely for holding the crew, the habitation module inside, and whatever internal cargo that they needed. And thus, why we have the 16th thousand liters of volume for the Kerbal inventory system so that we have that large inventory that it would have had on the inside. And I kind of like that. It's, it makes it a little bit more difficult for certain missions, but in my mind, a lot more useful for many, many others. And so having that Kerbal inventory system uh, inventory and such a large one, again, 16,000 volume, that's, uh, that's pretty impressive there. And and hold, will hold quite a bit. And so that is quite fun. Now the other um, <laughs> oddity is the lifting surface. I said we'd come back to that, and that is because if you just strap a rocket onto the back of this thing, say for instance, like um, <laughs> uh, this ship that I made earlier, there we go, oh, that's the autosave, here's the main one. If you just throw a ship down, Let's actually uh, delete the fairing there. Like so, this whole rocket is gonna go out of control because of that powerful 4.5 lifting surface. It will just start to go all over the place and become uncontrollable. So it is recommended that you do launch this thing with a fairing. And let's actually demonstrate this real quick. Let's send out the CEV launcher and launch it without the fairing. And I'm not gonna touch the controls at all. We're just gonna turn on SAS, throttle up, and fire and without me touching a thing once we get a little bit higher in altitude this thing will start there it goes it just starts just going all over the place very very weirdly and yeah it's because of that powerful lifting surface that makes up this shuttle so if we revert flight back to the vehicle assembly building and reload this with the fairing which of course does require quite a large one as it is not exactly the most compact of cargo there. And if we launch it this time, it should go off without a hitch. So let us actually launch this thing into space and um, even for its mass that it does have, this simple rocket with just six solid rocket boosters, an orange fuel tank and a mainsail engine, this will easily get this baby into space, so it's not that difficult, frankly. So let's just launch this, and I'm just gonna fire it straight up, not touch anything, just like before, and so that you guys should see that we don't go all crazy and wonky with uh, out of that lifting surface. We're well past the point where the ship did go out of control last time, and that is a very, very good thing. And we're just gonna keep this thing going straight until we run out of, um, 
the solid fuel, and I'm actually going to throttle down the main sail. What the heck? We're mainly using the solid rocket boosters at this point. Not much of a reason to waste all that good liquid fuel. And almost, almost, and we'll release the fairings in a second, and it will be glorious. And drop those. Throttle you up, and now let's angle. And had we actually started turning far before this, we could actually get into a very nice orbit, but uh, since I wanted to show us going completely straight up that it was surviving with uh, the lifting surface, uh, we are not going to be in an orbit, but we're at a pretty high altitude here. So yes, if you piloted it better with a simple ship, you could actually get this thing into orbit very easily, which is always convenient. And now we release the fairings. Beautiful. And we have a shuttle. And the little puff engines that are currently being used. Nice. Now let's look at the interior on this thing, because it does have an interior, which is fun. So let's go into the internal view. Now thing is though on this, I should mention that this is not a custom interior. In fact, it is borrowing a interior, with permission of course, uh, which has just been slightly modified and retextured from the Conteres mod. So it's uh, originally made by H.R. Aben and has just had some modifications for this particular ship. And here we go. We have our crew. They've got little things all over the place, a little uh, fire extinguisher. Let's uh, take a look around the ship. Other pilot here. Nice little panels. Always nice. The back. So as you can see, the five people are orientated. Two at the front, two in the back, and one in the center. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty nice little ship. Not exactly the you know, most comfy of designs, but hey, it's for space, and it functions well. And there we go, a lovely coffee mug there in the uh, foreground. Excellent, and yeah, that, that is the Lockheed Kerbin CEV. It's really all there is to show on this thing. I mean, it is, it is a fun little ship. I do enjoy this thing. Oh, I guess we should show off while we're here the RCS ports. So you can see all the built-in RCS. You really won't have to do any weird attachments of your own unless you really, really want to. But uh, other than that, you should be good to go with just the built-ins. And yeah, it's a lovely design for a little shuttle. I'm actually a little sad that they went with the Orion, you know, instead of this. But I can understand the limitations that they, you know, didn't want to have to deal with. But yes, this is the Crew Exploration Vehicle and is a pretty fun little mod if you'd like to check it out for yourself, which I definitely say you should go and do. You can take a look at the link in the description as per usual. And of course, I do hope that you have enjoyed this episode today and that you do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always, now have a good one. Now away with the very low thrust puff engines. Later, folks.